Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And we are back with your favorite guest of my expert series, the one and only Anna Kelly. Hi, Anna. Hi, it's so nice to hear that I'm the favorite every once in a while <laughs> in a house full of kids that think their mom's like out of touch, you know? <laughs> no, there, there is no question, given the audience interaction, folks. Again, let's show Anna some love right now. Uh, show her how much you've appreciated her in 2021 and 2020. And I think we even spoke a few times in 2019. She is the OG of the channel. So Anna, <laughs> I thank you for coming back every week. Thank you, Michael. Hey, so I have um, I have something that was kind of a, you know, one of those two standard deviation ideas that now has gotten a lot closer, which means more likely. I think Jerome Powell, given his pivot last week, has done a couple of things. First, for 18 months or so, he wanted full employment over stable prices, and he got it, right? Just like any parent, you can only have one priority. This whole two priorities is a joke. Right. I believe last Tuesday, he declared something that most people are missing. He now has gone back to stable prices over full employment, because again, unemployment rate as of the end of November was 4.2%. So most of my adult life, that would have been considered full employment. Right. Where I'm going with this is... I think Jerome Powell knows he has a problem. I think he's going to be far more aggressive with taper and then interest rate rise by the summer of next year. But where I'm going with this is I think Jerome Powell, he won't, he will not say this, but I think he wants a recession next year. And a session, a recession again is two quarters of negative GDP growth because that will break inflation or yeah, it'll break inflation. So I, uh, I now think that uh, kind of my base case, not two standard deviations, my base case is we have a recession in 2022. So I thought I would ask you, you watch the economy as much as I do. Am I all wet? Am I crazy? Am I just down some rabbit hole or what do you think? No, you're not crazy for sure. You know, it, it's as we've talked about, you know, I love having these conversations because it takes a lot of smart minds to figure out where things are going when everything keeps happening that's unprecedented, right? So we're trying to figure this out. And you know, what I can say is that I've been really surprised over how things have gone over the last year and a half to two years, things we didn't see coming, right? Mm -hmm. yep. But all indicators pointed to while people thought we were at this amazing economy before the pandemic hit, the indicators were showing us that we were heading to recession already. We so were. we were in the longest expansion period in the U.S. history since President Abraham Lincoln was in office. Wow. And we're pretty old, but he's a lot older than we <laughs> yeah. are. Right? I, I did. You can make fun of me, but I was not alive back then. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, you know, I believed we were heading to recession anyway. Mm -hmm. And with the pandemic, we I thought, you know, the economy would crash, really. But the government showed they were willing to do whatever it was to prop us up. And Hel that helicopter up. money. Helicopter. Absolutely. And that prop propping up, though, has consequences. So it kept things from getting dire, mm -hmm. gave a lot of people money, but that created all this you know, artificial income and, and demand, which we kept saying this is going to re result in mass inflation. It has to historically has to. see that. Right. Yeah. So after mass inflation, the Fed only has one reaction. They have to try to cool things off and get us out of a booming economy with inflation, which is only booming artificially. Mm -hmm. And that's by raising rates and you know, other monetary policy, taking money back out of the system. But it takes time. you know. Mm -hmm. And so I agree with you that the end result is after this mass inflation, to cool things off, they have to raise rates. And they hope that that brings the economy down. And I think it always leads to recession. The question is how quickly, right? And do I think 2020 is going to be a recession? Based on some things I've read, I think it's probably 2023. Okay. But I wouldn't be surprised about anything at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, this is kind of how I see it going. And it, it, I mean, it changes week to week. So yes, it my, does. my crystal ball is as broken as everyone else. Right. So Jerome Powell is going to start tapering faster. These are I'm, I'm laying these out here so people watching this could go, hey, he got that right. He got that wrong. So I think he tapers faster. Yeah. The initial plan was to be done by June. I now think he's done by April, maybe March, but I'll call yeah. it April. So two months. And I called it January. And oh. I might be a little soon, but I, I've been a little more anticipating of a quick rate rise than some other people have been. Mm -hmm. If he, I think 50 basis points in January. But if if wow. not, definitely by the summer. Yeah. So I that's, think 50 bips. Yeah, that's that's next. So again, watch the taper. I think it's faster because it was June. I think it will be yes. Um, April, March. 
then the first bump is half a point. No question. Right. They're, they're, they're going to, they're going to want to show, I can already see the headline. The fed takes aggressive stance on inflation and, you know, takes it up to half a point. Really? That's anyways. So that'll be the next thing. Yeah. And then the question is, because you and I have experienced this a couple of times. Once was Greenspan, I think Bernanke as well. Once they get on a rate t- rate tightening cycle, it runs years. Yes. Right? Uh, the last rate tight cycle you, you all can look at is 2015 to 18. It started slow, one, then, you know, two. And then it, by, the, by the last year, I think they rose four times in a year. So rate yeah. cycles are not one and done, usually. Absolutely. Uh, and they'll keep testing it until they see that the economy can't handle it. Oh, they'll so go too far. That in 2018, yeah. in December yeah. of 2018, they tried to really raise rates again. And December, January, I think it was actually the beginning of January 2019, but they had set the plan in motion at the end of 2018. Mm-hmm. And as soon as they tried to do that last rate bump, things started to really teeter. All these signs of recession, we're going to have a problem. And then they backed off and they reversed it. And so you know, we're going to anticipate probably six, seven, eight rate increases, I think, kind of come out with a bang with the first one and then maybe quarter points every periodically yeah. till they get it where it needs to go. And the question is just how many times can they really raise it without, you know, ripple effects through the through the markets? Yeah. So that's that's the next question I'm playing with is how high? What's the peak? Right. So, OK, we're at the bottom zero to point two five or a quarter. They're going to go a half. We both agree there. I think they. I think they're going to end up taking it to two, which would mean six more rate hikes before they kind of pause. Because I think again we'll be in a recession at this point. It's it, we've we've just got to pay for the sins of the past, and right. unfortunately that means a recession. It'll probably be multi quarters, more meaning more than two. It'll be three or four. I'm hoping it's not deep. Hopefully it's long and shallow. So I don't. It's just because again, what do we have coming? We have. Right now, if you go Christmas shopping, you got no sales, no discounts, none of that. But you wait until all the supply chain unlocks, all the double and triple ordering companies I know we're doing. That stuff's going to come on store shelves. If I if I had a magic wand, I would move Christmas to June, right? You want to go get Black Friday specials in June? Go move, move Christmas. Cancel Christmas. Move it to June because every nothing's on sale. There's no inventory. I, I went to buy a... Uh, Oh, I don't usually talk about things I do, but I went to buy Olivia a very expensive handbag and the guy's going, good thing you came in because we already are down 50% from where we should be. We probably won't have any purses to sell and take home next week. I'm like, wow. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, um, and then again, but again, once this unlocks, the inventory will show up again. Also what's happening right now is all these people who got free money aren't appreciating it. They're spending it like water. And then they're going to have nothing left, you know, next year. So it's, I'm just a little freaked out about next year, I guess. Yeah, I I am too, a a little bit. You know, I I think rates go up. um, But again, we've got more people in the workforce, but they're demanding higher wages too. The wage cycle, yeah. Between both the rates and the wages, I think inflation is going to be here longer to stay, even if we went into a technical recession. Oh, no, uh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, so so I think you can be in a, in a recession and still have inflationary pressure that causes certain prices to go up that aren't necessarily related to, you know, supply and the supply chain issues. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I agree. Know. And that's what that's why I think. Again, I've said this, I think I said this nine months ago. I think Powell will be raising rates in a recession, which I don't recall ever happening because inflation is so bad. Right, that, that they don't have many other options because they cannot control anything on the supply side. So, it, you know, economies are all about supply and demand, as we talked about. They have zero control over the supply chain issues mm-hmm. and the supply not keeping up with demand. Um, we also have more people choosing not to go to work more people just exiting the labor force rather than sitting on unemployment. And then those, like, like we talked about, that are working are demanding higher wages. So, you know, how how much can they raise rates at the same time that there are supply chain issues and, you know, more people demanding higher r- wages before, you know, things just collapse? I, I don't know the answer to that, you know, but I I tend to think historically what we've seen is that um, they don't raise rates too high, too rapidly, or it does cause systemic collapse. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe 1% in 2022 
Okay. Um, maybe into t- early 2023 rates go up. Mm-hmm. The challenge again with the Fed, they've kind of they're, they've put themselves between a rock and a hard place too, Michael, because historically they've been a net lender. So yes, right. they borrow, but they they lend more. And so mm-hmm. now they're this net borrower to the tune of six to seven trillion dollars net. Mm-hmm. Every point they raise interest rates, they're paying it back higher and yeah. with more taxes. So this is, you know, I I know there's so much to unpack here, but let's say we go into a recession, they raise rates high enough, we go into a recession, companies start laying off so people can't demand quite as high wages. But now what what are we going to do? We're going to do build back better. We're going to add another trillion or so into the spending, and they're going to massively raise taxes, which is another inflationary um, impact on your pocketbook. So when, when that all happens together, I think we're in for some pain for a couple of years. Is that 2023, 2024? I think so, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's only, there's only a couple of ways you get out of this. You can inflate your way out, right? Which, you know, inflation at a moderate level, call it four or 5% actually helps debtors, which the United States is the largest debtor. Uh, Much more than that, it's problematic, but four or 5% is manageable, but yeah, taxes are that's the other way you you extract liquidity via taxes. So yeah, I do not have a um, yeah, I don't have a rosy. I, 2022 scares me like no other year. Um, yeah, I just see a convoluent. I just I just see this is the best analogy. And, and, and the question is, is, what do we do? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No, you're good. Sorry, yeah, we have delay. Yeah, what I was going to say is. Um, I think what's happening now, the best analogy I have is all all of us have been to parties where you've always had that one person that drank too much, stayed too long. (laughs) And I think that's where we are. We've been, the Fed's been at the party too long. They filled up the punch bowl with uh, some, you know, grain alcohol one too many times. And now the people that are left, uh, we're going to have to pay the price with a nasty hangover. And uh, that's what I see coming, probably starting in the summer of 2022 and probably lingering. I think it's four quarters. So that to the summer of 2023. So yeah, yeah it, not, it's not a tad longer, you know, because the, the other thing that's that kind of makes me agree with you, you know, in terms of we're heading toward a recession, the question is just when and for how long is that I don't recall a period and I'm 47, right? So I don't re- recall a period in time when the consumer psyche was so rocked by the convergence and confluence of so many things at one time, right? So we've got the pandemic, we've got political um, battles over everything, um, over everything, right? Um, We've got countries threatening other countries for war that could pull America back in. Um, We've we've got the threat of taxes, we've got increased prices, and it's all hitting the American psyche so hard that if the economy crashes again, um, and, and, and they don't have extra money in their pocket and everything's more expensive, do they go back to normal buying behaviors in a year, year and a half? I tend to think that people are going to be kind of more doom and gloom and and conservative and careful, Mm -hmm. probably for longer than a year and a half. Now, the markets don't do that. But, you know, the the average American whose pocketbook is actually hit every month, um, that's Mm -hmm. not just invested in millions of dollars of stocks and bonds in a balanced portfolio, they're going to be hit hard. And, And I think their psyches rocked a while. So, I tend to think the pain's going to last longer than shorter. Fun topic. Wow. I just feel all warm and fuzzy now. Thank you very much for this. On how can people follow you? Because uh, you put out a lot of amazing stuff. <laughs> Great. I will say there's good news, right? We're going to talk about the good news in the next episode. And what do we do about it, right? There you go. Yes. Um, but you can follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram at Anna, REI Mom Kelly. My website's reimom.com. And for those looking for passive investments that make a meaningful impact, greaterpurposecapital.com. Thanks, Anna. Thank you.